Hi, everyone. Blessing. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. It's so nice to have you with us today. I'm here today with B. Chapin. Hi, Lee, how are you? I am well. I'm so happy to be with you. You're, you're, this is just a, a great honor to, to be with you today. So thank you. Thank you so much for, for saying that. I'll quickly introduce us. So I'm Maxime. Everybody, you know me from doing the Mary Magdalene series, Weaving the Threads of Sophia, speaking with women authors and thought leaders and weaving back into the Magdalene consciousness and the coming of Christ, which is actually the Christess, right, back on the planet. And I'm here today with Lee to talk about her beautiful book, The Divine Union, um, as well as other gorgeous and juicy topics. I'll give you <laughs> a little rundown about uh, who Lee is. So Lee has a master's degree in counselor education and a bachelor of science in psychology with over 40 years combined experience as a psychotherapist, spiritual counselor and teacher, motivational speaker, author, licensed massage therapist, healing energy practitioner, and associate pastor. I love that. Reverend Lee is, in, is the owner of Celestial Connections, offering spiritual counseling, spiritual healing, intuitive guidance, and channeled messages from the Ascended Masters and the Angelic Realm. Her non- uh, denominational ministry focuses on uplifting all those in spiritual need, regardless of faith. Her traveling ministry includes teaching and counseling those in the U.S. and around the globe. Reverend Chapin published her second book, Divine Union, The Love Story of Jesus and Mary Magdalene in March 2017. Lee has also produced a number of CDs. Her work can be purchased through her website, leechapin.com and on Amazon. And with that, I'd like to say welcome. Yeah, welcome. How are Thank you? you so much again for having me. This has been an honor. And when you contacted me, I was really excited and I felt a real strong connection to you. So, Thank you for being so open and for being here. I just had this need whenever, whenever I read your book, I was like, wow, I need to speak to this woman. <laughs> I need to speak to her because something about this book and we can go into more of it later was that everything felt so real and, and unique something I've never heard before in that kind of voice. So I felt very drawn to you. Thank you for finding it. I appreciate it. I know when Spirit brought that forth, there was a lot of uh, reconciliation that I had to do within myself of bringing that information forward and how people would be received. And I've been really, really blessed that people around the globe have really received it with you know great love within their heart and great appreciation. And so um, thank you for being one of those who resonate with the story. I really, really am grateful. This is my, my divine pleasure. So to backtrack a little bit before we dive more into these um, beautiful topics of divine union and the love story of uh, Mary Magdalene and Yeshua, let's start with a question I ask everybody when we begin the interviews is, who was Mary Magdalene? She was a high priestess. She was a divine oracle. She was also considered the best friend of Jeshua and was raised in closely near the Holy Family of Mother Mary and studied under Mother Mary. And then eventually became, as we know, the wife of Jesus and brought forth the bloodline of Sarah, James and Joseph as part of mm -hmm. Jesus and Mary Magdalene's family. And so she plays many roles, but she is also, again, the twin flame of Jeshua holding the sacred template of divine union. Their energy has brought forth the template and the balance for all of us to merge into. So 2000 years ago, their energies were brought forth in sacred union. They had to go through a lot of their own struggles to be able to clear away what they felt or understood was a lot of suppression or seclusion, but they really held that, that balance within themselves to be able to know and to bring forth their divine mission here on the planet, which was holding the energy of divine masculine and feminine for all of us to now merge back into. What I find so, so potent about their story and their love story, their connection is that they were both real life humans going through the, <laughs> the challenges and the suffering. And then at the same time, they were so divine. So that kind of the merging of the two, they had to become the bridge themselves, but they were real, real humans and had these severe also emotions, right? Of that's what's, that's, gonna say, that's what's 
unique about my story because I've not read any other book that talks about the humanness or the frailties of Jesus and Mary Magdalene. We, we think of them as icons. We put them on a pedestal. And many of us here, as at least in our country or I guess around the globe of Christians, uh, have placed Jesus as an icon, as an untouchable. And so my book shares his struggles, his humanness, his frailties as, as he's merged into his Christ consciousness, as he's merged into his divine sacred union within himself. And so this is a, a, a different story that perhaps maybe has not been told that I'm aware of. And so again, as I've said, this is um, something that I had to reconcile because each chapter is narrated by either Jeshua or Mary Magdalene and talks about um, their emotions, their struggles, their story, their life together individually and then collectively. So it, it's, I'm really proud of my book. Uh, it took uh, quite a long time for me to put this together, um, but I finally completed it in March of 2017 and it's just taken a life of its own. So I'm here it is in your hands in Spain. So <laughs> yes, it found me. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, found you. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure. I mean, like you said, it touched so and still touches so many people um, around the globe. Um, what I find so fascinating about Yeshua is that he was a really interesting man. He was a very uh, interesting man at the time to be this uh, outspoken and this revolutionary, and to, to be so adept and open to the women in his life, which is the most natural. Um, frame of mind that he, yes women are my equal if not even more um so spiritually wise and all these um, beautiful things well he was raised by his mother who was a high priestess and Mary Magdalene is a high priestess and so he understood the energy of the sacred feminine and the power of the feminine and didn't dismiss it so that's what's so lovely about Joshua is that he he held that energy of the divine masculine the strength to be able to move forward and to share his words I don't want to say without fear, but he was able to do it with the grace and the confidence that he brought it forth. And again, bringing forth the tenderness and the love and honoring, again, the energy of what we call cosmic mother, divine Sophia, the energy he understood about earth mother, he understood about the sacred feminine. And so this beautiful balance and this individual is, um, is heartwarming. And so, yeah, he understood that he understood and connected with divine mother because his mother was the ultimate divine mother. Yeah, that's so beautiful that uh, back then, and uh, no matter what the world looked like and how different from nowadays, or even, um, or maybe even on other sides, not so different, how women were gathering and how we had these sacred circles and how priestesses were alive as well, <laughs> you know, and uh, I want to say live and well, living, you know, living, being part of the community. And, and we went underground. You went underground, really. Um, yeah, have you read the book The Way by Kristen Wolf? No, not yet, but that sounds interesting. Oh, you need to interview her. Yeah, write that down. Kristen Wolf, The Way, I just finished it. It's oh. really lovely, it's a novel. Um, but it talks about the sacred feminine energy and how they had to suppress themselves against the male patriarchal rule. And it's, it's really fascinating story, and yet, that's a part of what, what we'll talk about here shortly is the role of Sarah, the daughter of Jesus and Mary Magdalene, where she had to be secluded and hidden. But in this book with the way it talks about the suppression and the women have not being recognized for their powers and had to hide. And so that's what's lovely about the story of Jeshua and Mary Magdalene is that they're bringing this forward and helping to understand that the cosmic mother has a voice that it's time for that no longer to be suppressed. And so we're now in a time where we can honor this because more and more of us are remembering and are awakening. And so that's that's the beautiful um, uh, frequency that I believe is connecting all of us, like you connecting me, mm -hmm. we're all being connected by the energy of the cosmic mother because it's time to return to that beautiful state of loving grace, peace, compassion, and divine holiness. Yeah love love and harmony thank you and i just feel like the different resonance and i've been thinking about this for a while now when when children who are born out of divine love and adoration how different their vibrational blueprint is when they go through life mm -hmm. well every month i channel the essenes so that started happening the beginning of this year 
And so in the information that the Essenes have brought forth is that when they brought forth the children, that they honored the children's spirit, that the parents came forward and they were prepared to bring forth a child into the life and to honor the spirit of the child and the soul. And so that was the way that Jesus and the Essene community was raised. And so how lovely that you brought this up because it's so important for all of us to be able to honor our spirit because oftentimes back in the olden days, kids were seen but not heard mm. you know, years and years and years ago. And now we've come to uh, another way where um, the children are more expressive and more open. And yet, if we can begin to teach people that every spirit, every soul is honored and has a gift to share. And so this is a part of uh, helping us to move into that new earth, to be able to move into that new energy of the balanced way of honoring all life and respecting all life. Yes, that's so beautiful. Even today, um, while I was preparing for this interview, I was at a cafe and I was uh, seeing there was this young family that entered this man uh, with two little toddlers and babies and the way he interacted with them was so divine and so gorgeous I couldn't look away and it was full of love and with masculine strength and it was it was so beautiful because the children were clever and they were they knew they were loved and you can tell really you can really tell and that's uh that was so so beautiful to to see that shift yes in my life you know from my consciousness but also as we're doing this collective uh, weaving and healing and bringing the divine children back to to earth and it's lovely that the, that there are men that are open to that they're not afraid of the sacred feminine energy and afraid to to show that love yeah because I was, my father just passed away about six months ago. He was 91. I know he loved me, but it was hard for him to, to express that. So it's lovely to see yeah. the new energies coming forth and the children being embraced and bringing forth in, in, in that balance. So there's a lot of changes happening. So it's really exciting. So we are coming, we are coming forward. So yeah, thank you for bringing that up because that's, that's really a part of this story of divine union is it's about everything returning back to balance, everything being brought forth into the vibration of cosmic mother love. Yes. And I think the, the force of, of motherhood and what I'm learning now through all these downloads and these teachings and my research is that is at the, the highest spiritual initiation, right? Which you could go through the way that Mary Magdalene uh, went through with Sara Tamar as, as well, as described in your book. Well, we're... As we talk about activation, it's it's interesting because we're today at we're at we're eight eight we're at the Lions Gate yeah. we're at that portal today. So yeah. isn't that interesting? I, I made yeah. note of that when uh, you asked me to to be on. To go, oh, isn't this interesting mm -hmm. <laughs> that you and I are here on this particular day of, of portal opening and an activation? And so, um, as we were talking about earlier. Um, I received a download that there was going to be a portal opening today at 12 12 p.m uh, central time in usa so that while we're speaking there's going to be an activation of a portal that's being opened here on the planet for the divine balance to return and so you are a part uh, of that and so i know that you that your energy is a part of that activation and, and opening and awakening here on this planet so um Thank you. 12, 12. <laughs> 12, 12, but it looks like we've, we've just uh, passed it, which is great. So woo, celebration time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The 12, 12 Eastern time. Yeah. We're in, we're at, uh, yeah. 1115 central, but we yeah, are 12, 12. Okay. So that's coming. That's coming. Okay. Yeah. You're right. You know, I get confused. We're all over the, the world, um, but we are, we're connected. Um, I was just joining a, a new moon meditation in, in Leo in the UK. Uh, and that's just an hour, hour behind. I know it's confusing. <laughs> oh, that's that's so so wonderful, and so great. Uh, I want to dive into a few topics um, about Mary Magdalene. Made a note here. Something I found very very interesting. Um, I mean, there's so much we can talk about. That yes, she was the emanation of the goddess, and she saw herself as such, as a divine feminine. She actually became a scribe, right, and was taught by the no names, something you refer to in your book as the no names. Can you explain a little bit what or who these beings are? The no names are a collective 
energy of one. So they're not one individualized energy. They're a collective group of beings that were Mary Magdalene's guides. I don't know a lot about them, except um, they, they were her particular guides that were guiding her through this, her incarnation and helping her to understand her oneness and help empower her during that incarnation to be able to move through what we call her sacred balance within herself. Because the, the struggle, as I understand it through Mary Magdalene, was being able to live in her true authentic self in times where the women were not honored or they were not allowed to speak or they were not able to, to share openly. And so within her own family unit, there was a level of suppression. And so by being able to turn within and work with the known names, she could go in into that stillness, into that quietness and begin to feel empowered within herself, which was a part of what their role was to help her during that time. Mm. Yes, it's so interesting. I mean, that they were so connected. They had this spiritual gnosis. Um, what would you say to people who are just finding out about Mary Magdalene and who are just um, starting on this path of remembrance? There's a lot of confusion about her in terms of uh, her role and you know what we were told through our Bible that she was a prostitute and a sinner and that kind of thing. And now so many of us, which is so lovely, understand her as being high priestess, as being the twin flame of Jeshua, as coming into her own now at this time where people are recognizing that this magnificent being is an ascended master and that she has come to help us just like all the other masters. Master Buddha or Master Hilarion or uh, Paul the Venetian or Joshua, uh, Katumi, you know, all of the masters that have worked to help bring forth the ascension of humanity. So she is one of the great masters that is being recognized now. And so in mm -hmm. 1997, when I started channeling Mary Magdalene, there was less interest in it. And now fast forward 28, 24 years later, so many people are talking about here we're talking about it and so it's like oh okay it's okay it's there's more people that are understanding this more people are awakening to it and yet her role is to help empower us uh, to really merge into finding our voice to finding our power and being able to move forward into the work that we've come to do because that's really what this is all about us moving forward into our oneness and being able to tap in to our own spiritual gnosis but also to tap into our own spiritual gifts and abilities so Every Monday morning, I channel the mystical teachings of Mary Magdalene and Jeshua. I've been doing that for probably 15, 17 years. I've lost track of time. Mm -hmm. And so I put those out now on my YouTube channel, which is probably where you found me, I suppose, where that's where a lot of people are finding me. But her universal teachings are being brought forth to help awaken others. And so she's just bringing forth those understanding of spiritual principles to help us to live, um, as they say, our best life, but also to help empower us so we have a greater understanding of how to nav navigate through our earthly life. Yeah, thank you. That's so profound. And yes, you have an incredible YouTube channel. So, so wonderful to have all these channelings there. So really recommend if anybody listening is feeling called to, uh, to check that out as well. Um, what I find so beautiful, yes, they, they were both aware, Yasha and Mary Magdalene were, where they were going to bring this um, new consciousness to to humanity through also in one part uh, them not ever really having time together as husband wife as lovers as partners and um, as the mission they understood the mission for the world was so much more important um, and their faith was so much more important than focusing on that right now right um, we had a little bit that came in through later when, when Sara was, uh, we said the first year of life, they, they lived together, Yeshua and Mary Magdalene, they spent some time together, um, but they knew their mission was um, beyond themselves and, and the commitment to it is it really resonates with me as well. Well, they understood this, but it still was difficult, I believe, as I brought that, those messages forward from Jesus and Mary Magdalene and particularly from Mary Magdalene because you know, she wanted to have her husband, she wanted to have a father for her children, and it was difficult, I'm sure, for her to be alone, even though she was a part of the Essene community, but to be able to have that connection, that energy, but as described in the book, they were able to communicate telepathically and be able to communicate with each other, uh, and yet in some ways that probably doesn't still, you know, fulfill the longing of the heart as someone physical, 
in the world, but they both had their missions. And as you read my book, you'll understand the great conflict. And yet that was really a part of them being able to find wholeness and unity within themselves to be able to what we call partner with yourself. So many people searching for love, as yeah. I say, looking for the love in the, all the wrong places. And so here on our planet, it's a planet of love. Mm -hmm. And we, in particular, I guess our society focuses on romantic love. And so we're always searching for the one person to fulfill us. And it really, this book is really about us being able to fulfill ourselves, to union with our God self and be able to find that completion. Doesn't mean you can't have romantic love, doesn't mean you can't find a partner. And yet when you come into wholeness and union with yourself, you have a greater chance of being able to find your twin flame or your soulmate or be able to, to be successful in that re in relationships. Yeah. So that is part of what their template, their energy was holding for us to come in again, as I said, into that sacred balance so that we can feel that oneness with our God self. And then again, a lot of our struggles will be eliminated once we begin to truly know who we are and, and feel uh, complete within ourselves. Yes, that's so beautiful. They were always constantly being initiated as are we right? We're always being initiated. And I certainly resonate with that, that feeling as well and the searching and the longing, but it, we really have to look at ourselves and always come back to, to ourselves, which I think is the, the struggle <laughs> of it. People don't like to hear that. Yeah. No, they don't. They don't. It makes, yeah. It's like the, the shadow or, you know, staring into the, the face of the, the black Madonna focusing on her left eye. And then, you know, how you have all these subconscious, um, learnings which come out from that facing you with that mirror so it takes courage to do that work it takes courage to be able to 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 really begin to recognize that there yeah as you talk about the shadow side of these pieces within me that are looking to come into union and what does that really mean or how does that really look uh, and yet that can be a whole uh, class or ceremony in which to be able to help people to do that but first begin to recognize that it's like, oh, okay, this is, this is really why we're here on earth. This is a part of our mission work is to return back to God. When we were, again, brought forth on this planet eons and eons ago as our spirit, we forgot our oneness. We forgot the completion to come into human body, to live our life through many incarnations, to go through the struggles. And so then there's layers and layers of um, soul traumas and soul emotions and all those layers come. And yet trying to to decipher our oneness and our divinity has really been a struggle. And so this, this book, uh, Divine Union is actually a portal. It was completed in Mount Shasta, California, uh, where the Lemurians, uh, the Talos community lives underground Mount Shasta, California, where they lived in balance. So this book was finished there and was created in that portal for us to be able to find that balance. So when you read it, when you touch it, it activates within you mm -hmm. and it will activate that energy for you to see, for you to, feel that spark so that you can begin to merge through and into oneness. I just want to show that again because the colors are so, so beautiful and the artwork is so divine. There's a lot there. We have the birds, we have the, the flowers and the love and it's truly, truly gorgeous. Like the sun, which we have now with the, the new moon in Leo today. It's just gorgeous. And the uh, best of Pisces there in the center of the room. Well, yeah. And we have, of course, um, the womb. I mean, it's just, it's a meditation in itself, right? It's a meditation and, and you can meditate just with the image of the book, I would say. When I created that book, I wanted to have a certain look. I wanted to have a certain feel and I wanted it to evoke emotion. So I knew I wanted to be colorful. I had a vision of what I wanted for that cover. I wanted the emergence of Mary and Jesus in sacred union. And I wanted it to feel a certain way. I wanted when you touch it, it had a kinesthetic feel. And also I wanted to be able to evoke your emotions. And so I feel like I've accomplished that. But it was interesting before I went to Mount Shasta to complete that book, I didn't have a cover and I was stewing, stewing, stewing. And I thought, hmm, you know, I was judging myself because the book was almost done. I thought I don't have a cover. But well, ended up that I was led to find this woman named Sharonda Kamara in Mount Shasta, California. Mm -hmm. And I was in a small coffee shop and I was like a bloodhound and I was sniffing around thinking there's something here I'm supposed to, to have or see or know. It was really strange. And all of a sudden I saw her print uh, of that cover and uh, she lived there in Mount Shasta. And so 
the lady who ran the coffee shop, I was ex really excited because that was the vision I had for my book, but I didn't know where to find it. And there I was led to find it and Sharonda graciously allowed me to use that print as a part of my cover. And so um, that was that was interesting how spirit yeah. brought that forward and together because um, I just had a vision of it and knew that's what I wanted, but where am I gonna find this? And right. So, it's always interesting. Everything is divinely guided. Everything is divinely guided. That is so true. The same way that this interview has come together and it's coming together with ease and grace, right? So there's this Sophia consciousness that's just, you know, gently guiding us with like angel wings, pushing us forward and together. And I think that's so, so beautiful because we, what the purposes of, of my work, and I think a lot of people who connect to this energy of Mary and Yeshua and Sarah, is that we are here to lay the foundation of something, right? And in my belief, and I believe you also talked about it in, in your book, that there is going to be some writings. Yeah, one day will be found in the south of France. Um, I have the same inclination. Um, that when Mary Magdalene's writings will be found, and I'm getting about 200 years or in some kind of time frame, they will be found. And the foundation will be here. We will have uh, conversations, discussions, dialogue. We'll have uh, sacred texts, channelings. So it'll be easier for those who are non-believers or who have doubted in the past to, to come aboard the, I say ISIS ship, the, the Sophia <laughs> Sophia ship that yeah and ride her wave with us yeah everything is again like I said divine timing when people have to be far enough in consciousness so look how 2,000 years ago the consciousness and then even now and like I said even when I started channeling 28 years ago the consciousness has shifted just in 28 years and we can have this conversation I can write this book that you have found my book uh, that so many more people are awakening and really understanding these principles and concepts that um, are not so archaic. Um, the work that I do is try to help people understand spirituality from what I call uh, practicality. Yes. Bringing forth spirituality for real life solutions. So I do spiritual mm -hmm. counselings and healings with people just to help them in their daily lives to understand aspects of their life that they're struggling with. And so, so that spirituality and these concepts that Mary and Jesus are bringing forward are a part of modern day that we can incorporate and integrate this in our lives. So again, as I said, we can be better people, that we can find our, our true mission and be able to do what we came here to do on earth and not have all the confusion and the chaos and the struggle uh, that we have, because that's a part of really what this divine balance is bringing back forward is that we be peaceful beings, that we live on our peaceful planet, we honor the planet, we honor each other, we honor ourselves. That's really beautiful. Thank you. It's so important to have that merging between the, the spiritual and the real life and the practical. And I love that you say that because I was even going to, to go there and weave that thread in. Mm, what are some current you know, challenges you're, you're seeing with, with people who are coming to you and, and they're either they're lost or they've lost guidance or, I mean, you do so much brilliant work on a practical level. If you've had any if you have any words of wisdom um, for people who might be watching this and who might feel a little bit in a funk. As I take a deep breath, mm -hmm. what I'm seeing now is the tremendous fear that people are holding within themselves. And because of the current situation with the pandemic and just the world affairs, there's tremendous fear. And as uh, Spirit has told us uh, or told me that at the beginning of time when humanity separated from oneness i call it falling from grace but that's not really probably the right way to say it but when we disconnected from oneness when we came to this planet and chose to be earth volunteers we forgot our oneness and a, an imprint of fear began to set up in the collective consciousness of humanity so at this time we're going through a major purging and a part of that purging is helping people to begin to clear their own fears, but the collective consciousness of the fear. So a part of my understanding, what I've been told, is that this tremendous fear that's on the planet this, at this time uh, is needs to be examined and to be looked at within ourselves first. And then as we begin to clear 
this fear, then we can clear the collective consciousness of fear. But this virus and the energy that's happening, this is a part of, um, um, I don't want to say it's a wake up call, that's not the right word, but it's, it's there for us to understand that this in some way is an illusion, that we're still connected to the God source, we're still connected to ourself. And that's really what Jesus and Mary Magdalene and the work that I bring forth is turning within and listening to the still quiet voice from within. Mm-hmm. So you begin to listen to your own truth and begin to stand in your own power and to begin to make, as they say, your own decisions about what is right and true for you. It doesn't mean that you can't listen to other people, but what resonates within you? So that's what I'm, the focus now is helping people, is helping people move through that fear and being able to move back into their heart and listening to their heart, getting recentered and staying in that state of, of grace. Um, I have, I've been really, really blessed. I know it's because of my work with spirit, but I haven't subscribed to the fear. And so I try not to to put my energies in lots of other places where uh, that's happening Mm -hmm. because I keep my attention on working with my spiritual team and listening to my own guidance. And that is really what these messages of Jeshua and Mary Magdalene are helping us now. If we can turn off the noise and begin to listen quietly. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for for that. I I'm with you on that um, on so many level, levels. So first of all, thank you for the reflection for for people who've been feeling disconnected from faith, because what you are saying and what you're teaching is them empowering themselves again to become whole uh, within themselves. Mm-hmm. I think it's really really important now because it, this fear is really really prevalent. I mean, it's 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 uh, it's interesting. I have. I have some, I have a, a channeling on my YouTube about the virus and fear. If you scroll down somewhere, I don't know what day it was when that happened. I think it was last year. I think it was last spring, spring of 2000, uh, 2020 when this first started happening, but it describes uh, the vibration of fear and, and how it is a part of uh, that collective consciousness that needs to be uh, looked at and examined. Yeah, I'm with you on that in terms of I was able to completely disconnect and things were just happening in the outside world. And I've had the privilege to stay safe enough, but I was not subscribing to, to anything. And I went on and lived my life, enjoyed my life the way that was possible. You know, at the time I did a lot of also inner work in 2020, a lot of meditation, a lot of healing work, um, working with my, my coach, uh, Toast Coker who works with her guide hands of light. So we were doing lots of, uh, meditations, coachings, and really staying centered. So that was 2020. And 2021 was really this year of empowerment. So I've experienced a lot of amazing up-leveling and, and consciousness rising experiences in the last um, last year and two years because of not subscribing to, to this illusion, but staying centered and really looking at myself. I think that's what this opportunity also um, is there for us to do. Yeah. And that's what that's what spirit said. This was an opportunity for us to turn within, to be able to yeah. really find our soul purpose and to find a soul calling for the, those who, uh, however, their life wasn't working, yeah. that if they were listening to their okay. soul's calling, they would be directed into a new direction, either yeah. through their work or through their relationships or um, just their attitude. Uh, and so that was an opportunity for stillness, for quiet for inner reflection to be able to turn within my guides was I was supposed to teach more. Mm. And so I was, that was an opportunity for me to do that this, you know, past year or so. So if people were listening and were tuned in, then they were like, oh, I'm going to do something different. I'm feeling called to do something different. And, or maybe others were still paralyzed in their fear and, yeah. and, and felt stuck and, and isolated and didn't feel like they were doing anything. But this was a great opportunity of what I call going into the void. Right. Where Jesus and Mary Magdalene talk about going into the cave of creation and where the no names, we're talking about the no names and they're helping her to go in and listen to her own truth. Uh, this was an opportunity of um, um, a global shutdown for people to begin to listen to their own truth. Yes. And, and what it did for the earth as well on an environmental level. They, I mean, we got just to see a glimpse of what we're actually um, 
capable of doing as a society. And I think if we center our light and there's so many forces of light at work now, we will get to that utopia. And I'm, I'm very big on that because that is the new earth. And I believe it with every fiber of my being that we can make this, this, uh, this happen, this new earth. Well, the energies of the new earth are already coming on the planet and the new earth beings are coming. These new children are coming that are yeah. even more fully awakened, uh, mm -hmm. which is quite exciting. And so they are the change that we have been waiting for. Uh, I may not see it in my lifetime, but I'm here planting the seed and sharing uh, the wisdom for, again, hope, you know, help our people evolve so that we can really take hold and know that we can master and we can make a difference on our planet. Just as we saw um, during the shutdown where there was, you know, new life coming, animals were coming back in uh, to places where maybe they hadn't been seen or uh, the energy of the earth was rejuvenating itself. Um, and so this was an opportunity for us to really take note of that, that the earth can regenerate itself if we get out of the way and stop uh, destroying it or polluting it or doing all the things that we think it is necessary for uh, humanity's survival or civilization progress, whatever we call it, but honoring and, and taking a look mm -hmm. and understanding that, oh, the earth can rejuvenate itself, that the kingdoms can thrive if, if, we, mm -hmm. um, if we take note that... Um, that we're all here and we're all sharing this planet and that we have a responsibility to all life. Yeah, that's powerful. And this regeneration aspect is so, um, so potent as well. Like we can regenerate ourselves, we can be healed. So I just want to share with everybody, you know, it's so important if you're going through something to ask for help, even in that, that's something that's always open for you to do. If you're struggling, you can ask for help and, um, there will be so many way showers showing you the light and, and connecting you, you back to yourself. And uh, yeah, I think that is, that is also so important. Actually, there's, a book I, called the yeah. Seven there's a book called The Seven Sacred Flames by Aurelia Louise Jones, who channels right. the Masters. Um, she was in Mount Shasta, California, and she worked with the Lemurians. Are you familiar with that book? No, I'm not actually. I'm taking note because um, what I find so interesting also about my work, I do a lot of reading and a lot of research, of course, but I'm so open to whatever comes about because I know it's it's part of this weaving. So please share. Oh, I was going to say in that book, uh, one of the chapters, one of the Ascended Masters is is Lord Sananda Jeshua and how he uses the, how he used and will help us to work with the resurrection flame to resurrect our bodies and our minds and our spirits. So in that chapter, there is there are affirmations, there's a particular flame called the resurrection flame that he used to resurrect his body after the crucifixion to return back to perfect health and wholeness. And so I use that flame every day to help regenerate my body and to, oh. and if you need to regenerate your finances, your relationships, your health. Uh, and so that's, um, as you mentioned about being able to resurrect yourself, that's a powerful tool um, I teach that class and I've taught that class and, and recommend uh, many people read that book. It's a really powerful study book. It's, it's a really a Louise Jones, The Seven Sacred Flames through Mount Shasta Publishing Company. Thank you for, for the recommendation. That's, that's wonderful. And that's their practical tip. <laughs> At least one thing they can take from this conversation, right? So there are yeah. tools out there that will help you. There are lots of tools and Spirit and Jeshua and Mary Magdalene are always giving us tools um, mm -hmm. as we go out into the world to remember that we can play, place what we call the cloak of invisibility around us. Mm -hmm. We can begin to, to place that shield of protection around us so that if we are in danger that we will not physically be seen. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, do that. I, I use that yeah. not consciously from uh, knowing it was something from Mary Magdalene, but that is something I personally used in the past mm -hmm. just out of yeah, pulling it down from spirit as well. Yeah. Well, before all the, not before, but at some point during all of the, the mass shootings and particularly in the United States, unfortunately, we, we have this happening more than we need to. Um, Mary Magdalene said to please place the cloak of visibility around you. And so I do that every time I get in my car when I go out. Mm. Um, for that level of protection. There's so much information they give us. Like every week I said, I bring forth the teachings of Mary Magdalene and Jeshua and they're always helping us. They're always helping us to live in this life and to navigate our life and have this greater understanding 
of how to, to move through our life because it's difficult. We, you know, things happen to us. We have our own traumas, like we said. We have mm -hmm. issues that are unresolved that are carried over from past lives. We're all struggling. So I can't imagine, in all honesty, I can't imagine not having this information mm -hmm. uh, because I still struggle with my own frailties. And yet I have, I have all this access to all these masters. And yet for those who don't have any knowledge or understanding of this, um, how difficult it is to be able to navigate through life. And so this information is, is tremendously valuable that they're giving to us, helping humanity. I mean, the love for us is, tremen is, tr is tremendous, what they do time after time after time. And I've been working with, with them, like I said, specifically since 1997 and all the information that's been uh, gathered through me through all these years, I'm, <laughs> I'm blessed beyond measure. <laughs> And I want to share it, you know, I want to teach people and share with other people that this information is there for them if they wish to access it. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, that's wonderful. I want to shift gears a little bit. And previously, we discussed a little bit about Sara Tamar, the daughter of Mary Magdalene and Yeshua the Christ. Mm -hmm. Would you like to share a little bit about uh, her? About Sarah? Yes. Sarah is known as the missing Holy Grail. So she was the firstborn of Jesus and Mary Magdalene. She was born in that sacred union. He was created, as they say, through um, lost the word through um, light conception. Light conception, right? So she was physically conceived and yet energetically she was like conceived into her divine perfection of oneness of a divine masculine divine feminist so she holds that template of jesus and mary magdalene so she is that missing grail so many people are looking for that missing grail yeah. so i'm writing my third book sarah which is a continuation of divine union uh, of her story and her purpose and her mission as the missing holy grail where she holds that chalice she's holding the balance for all of us to merge into Mm -hmm. That's why it's important that we begin to understand the concept of balance uh, within ourselves, as we were talking before, but this is, this is the premise of Sarah's work, that she's now stepped forward. Um, her energy had to be suppressed uh, back in the early days for fear of uh, persecution. Uh, she came into St. De Muir with Mary Magdalene on the boat, um, and she was considered the gypsy servant. I'm sure you probably know all about that. And so she had to hide her identity. They thought she was the servant of Mary Magdalene, but she was her daughter. Mm -hmm. And so she's honored in Southern France. And so I recently was told that she was uh, the Black Madonna. I always thought it was Mother Mary. Uh, and so I'm like, I still am like, okay, did I get this right? Did I hear this right? Uh, but I just have to go with what I hear, that she is the Black Madonna, simply because she was veiled and that her truth and her identity was veiled. Um, she's stepping forward now to help people understand that they don't have to veil, they don't have to be suppressed, that people's true spirits can come forth and that it's a time for uh, others to really honor the spirit because um, a step back again, when I started my metaphysical work, um, I started on the journey in 1984, a long time ago, um, you had to hide certain things. Well, now I'm here talking to you and I don't feel any need to hide anything. Uh, so I've come a long way, the world's come a long way, and Sarah's here to help us to, to embody the fact that we don't have to be veiled, we don't have to suppress ourselves, we don't have to hide from our truth, that our spirits shine forth, and that as we honor our spirit, then we are honoring others and helping them to awaken. And so that's what, um, that's Sarah's role. Well, what you just said, my heart just opened. <laughs> my heart just opened and I could feel the power of it. I was, for a moment, I was like, well, <laughs> I'm going to fall off my chair. I really felt that. Wow. Well, I wanted to, um, to share um, at some point Sarah's message about balance. Please. And as we talked about at the 1212 here on Central Time, when that time comes, uh, for, that I can... Uh, bring that message forth about Sarah's bringing forth the, that divine balance back onto the planet. Because there's a, as I said, there's a portal opening here uh, on my friend Julie's property today. And so, you know, continuing with the questions, but I just, this, this is really, really important that Sarah's um, bring, brings down her energy f just to activate into the heart of Mother Earth, into the heartland. So that, like you said, you, you could feel it within your heart so others can begin to feel it. 
Wow. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. The this gift and the the channeling, and we'll certainly weave that in later. Um, so, what were you feeling? Can you can you describe? Yeah. What I was feeling was a heaviness in my head and then my heart just opening because this is new information to me in terms of the black Madonna. We have like the information. Okay. This is um, the earth mother. We have the Celtic mother. We have the veneration of, Oh, this is Mary Magdalene with Sarah Tamar. But if we then get the information, no, this is the black Madonna is Sarah Tamar. Um, There's just so much energy behind that. So that's what I was referring to that. I really feel that. Oh, thank you. Yes, it's a little funny for me to say because that just came up a bit, but I just have to go with it. And if it's if it's right, it's right. I guess if it's not, it's not. But that's the energy that I was uh, told to share that she is. Right. She's the veil that no longer needs to be veiled. Wow. And that's that's so potent and everything that's uh, happening in the world. And like you said, you are free to share what you want to share now, whether like 20 or 30 years ago might have looked a little bit different. So I feel like we are on a earth consciousness level. We're moving forward into a place where we are safe and seen no matter what our beliefs are and where we come from. So it's this whole dismantling of the supremacy and, and just this freedom. This is, again, part of bringing in the, the light codes and the earth, um, regenerating herself and up leveling. Yeah. And... You mentioned. I, I was going to say I don't know how old you are, but you're really lucky to to be in the midst of this. You know, still at a young age, because uh, uh, it was somewhat of a struggle. And yet, I know people now who you know still are afraid or awakening um, mm. that are afraid to share. Uh, but I feel it's safe. You know, the times are safe. Things are so much different than they were 30 years ago. But you know, yeah. can you imagine 2,000 years ago? Wow. You know, Joshua was trying to bring these principles of listening. And being still and listening that the God was within yourself and listening to your own wisdom. And of course, they persecuted him for that. The density of the, the earth um, energy back then. And that brings us to an interesting topic, because I wasn't sure if we were going to bring this up, but because it's such a heavy topic, but the way it's described in your book and in his uh, crucifixion, let's say his um, transformation, is the first time I've ever come across and really felt it in my whole body that he was describing his female disciples as um, it, the ones who, who held these light portals and stations of love. I think that's what we called it here. And that he, through the practice, and because he was a master alchemist and magician and, and healer, he was able to transcend uh, the suffering and go into a whole other space and, and we actually do see him transform and transfigure that he was put in a trance through them holding the web so that he later could be resurrected by Elizabeth and Mary in the cave. Are you, oh, sorry, are you asking me the question about when he was, had risen above his body, when he was sending love and forgiveness to the group, to the crowd? Yes, then he was, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's just, just an open wanted to open with that it, this was so potent in the book and, and so imprinted on me in some way that he was then through this experience through this enormous suffering sending the world so much love and healing and forgiveness that it it left a worldly imprint right mm -hmm. global consciousness yeah can you imagine but that was his his uh, higher self or oversoul his beautiful spirit was so still still divinely connected to the suffering of the people even though he's going through his own suffering but the, his own spirit self brought forth this this frequency this imprint uh for all to receive and then you know brought forth into the earth and so this is a part of um i've come across many people through my years that are still angry about the crucifixion and um uh, have a lot of fear about that uh that were there and so in that part of the book, or when I channeled that information, it was so beautiful to, it's like, it's hard to really conceive that level of love that he had for humanity to be able to do that, you know, in that exact moment. Mm. I mean, it just, it just, it just, I don't know, it's hard for me to even conceive that. 
Yes. It's this, this ultimate uh, sacrifice, but this merging with godly love. Mm -hmm. um, the power of forgiveness is, is life-changing. And I encourage people to also work with that as a practice. If you're looking for something to change your life or wanting to have a shift in your life, ask yourself, where can I forgive, right? Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I, and I believe that. Um, that if you want to shift in your life, look at your own karma. Where are your your hookups? You know what is that? What is the you know energy around your your money, your relationships, your daily life, your health, um, your wealth, and the practice of forgiveness. I think is this divine tool we sometimes really do not want to look at because it confronts us with ourself. Again, like we said earlier, with this sacred mirror of the the Black Madonna and this this the blackness the the universe and this um, abyss, um, we look at ourselves and we have to go into our subconscious. Now, if we work with forgiveness, it radically transforms our lives, right? Forgiving ourselves, forgiving, forgiving other people, whether you think um, they deserve it or not, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We forgive, we don't forget. We set boundaries, but we need to constantly forgive. It's like a muscle we need to practice. Are you familiar with my other book, The 12 Master Teachings of Christ? I've heard of it. I have not read it yet. Okay. Those are the principles that Christ taught. And yeah. so they start with love. The sixth lesson is forgiveness. And the last lesson is joy. Mm. So I have that in print form. I have it in um, Kindle. I have it also in audiobook. But as we talk about forgiveness, when I was working with that, the, the most difficult chapter was forgiveness. Yeah. And... Uh, I sort of got stuck on that a bit mm -hmm. because as you talk about, it's difficult for people to, to embrace that, but really is about helping people to understand that as we forgive, it's not less, not necessarily letting somebody off the hook, but it's, it's helping us to heal from our own pain yeah. and suffering. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I remember my spiritual teacher, when I first met her, uh, she asked me if I wanted to, um, if I didn't forgive, um, then did I want to come back and, and replay this lesson over again? And so I was like, no, not particularly. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was important for me to be able to master that to the best of my ability and to hold compassion for those who, again, have hurt us because we've all played many roles. We've been, we've been the victims, you know, we've been the ones that have been the perpetrators. And so everything is, we may not understand this lifetime, but it, we're, it's all a part of a, a part of the soul evolution in terms of soul lessons. And so if we begin to master our forgiveness, then we can, you know, shift out of that karma that we have with someone else and be able to be free. But in my book, that's what those teachings are about. And the 12 master teachings help us to then to embody those principles of love, peace, joy, forgiveness, remembrance, oneness. So it's, it's a, a beautiful little inspirational manual that I channeled in 2003 and there was not a lot of interest in it as I recently was talking about that before until now. And spirit said, once divine union come, came out, more people would be drawn to the 12 master teachings. They would be able to, this is also another tool as we talk yeah. about tools to help people to move forward into their ascension process. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. And where can people get that? It's available on my website at leadchapin.com and then also through Amazon. But like I said, I have it in print form and I have it on Kindle and then I have it on my audio book as well. So if people want to listen to it, they're encoded with uh, Jeshua's healing energy and vibration. And so it's, it's oh. vibrational medicine. And so if you read it or you listen to it, you're encoded with that frequency and it'll begin to help shift energetically so that you can begin to forgive. You can begin to find peace. You can begin to embrace the energy of joy within your life. So uh, it's a lovely little manual. I feel like that, now that we are talking about all these tools on, on a practical level, what people can do, I feel like this, this God energy giving us so much, right? Giving us so much. We just need to be open to it. We just need to be open and take that first step to say, hey, uh, I can do this or I am going to prioritize my, my self-development and my healing. That's wonderful. Plus, Spirit had said that, you know, we're bombarded with so much information and I don't really necessarily want to put bombard people with more information, but they're saying that 
that it's important that we take time to integrate that which we are studying. Mm. So if we go from one YouTube channel to another, or somebody's teaching here and there and there, we're not integrating, it's not helping us. Yeah. So that's what that little book, The 12 Master Teachings, is about. It's, it's a bedside manual for us when we're not feeling at peace to read the chapter of peace. When we're not feeling loving to read the chapter of what to allow that to integrate. So you repeat this over and over until you integrate the energy. That's really how we are beginning to shift. It's not going through and, you know, continuing to keep us stimulated with this, that, there's more, this, this. Uh, no, again, it's that turning within, slowing ourselves down and then beginning to integrate what we need uh, for us to shift whatever is we need to shift. Yeah. To focus on uh, that aspect of ourself. If it's anger, you know, if it's unforgiveness, um, if it's rejection, whatever it might be, uh, that because we all come in with themes in our life, there's a, there's some theme that we're plagued with that we're <laughs> that we're struggling to figure it out that keeps showing up, you know, in our lives. Yeah. So, so that's a great way to clear your own karma, right? And to clear that generational karma. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's beautiful. We're approaching, I think, your twelve. Uh, 12. <laughs> Isn't that right? I hope yeah. so. Yeah, so, Mark. It's, <laughs> it's high noon here. Yeah. It's high noon. Oh, that's uh, that's blessed. <laughs> um, a few more things I thought we could uh, talk about. Um, Elizabeth as the master healer who who breathed uh, life back into Yeshua. Um, we I, I know we have it here in the book. We call her the the task master. Or we could shift again to Tara Tamar and talk a little bit about her as a grown woman and where her life was leading before the channeling. I'll leave that up to, to you. You want me to talk about Elizabeth? I'm sorry, I didn't understand fully yes, what you said. Um, either could either talk about um, Elizabeth. I think maybe let's let's do that. Who was this character, Elizabeth, titled the task uh, master in your book? <laughs> Um, who essentially healed Christ uh, in the tomb, right? And well, Elizabeth was Mary, Mother Mary's niece, and her mother was Mother Mary's sister, and she passed away. And so, at that time, Mother Mary took in Elizabeth and her sister Miriam and raised them. So Elizabeth was raised by Mother Mary. So she was Jesuit's cousin, mm -hmm. and she eventually became Mary Magdalene's best friend. She was one of the 12 female disciples. Mm -hmm. So just as Christ had 12 male disciples, we talked about that inner circle of uh, the feminine. And so she was one of the 12 female disciples. Um, she's not recognized in the Bible. I've had uh, other people say, well, she sounds like she was Claire. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, no, I don't know about Claire, but I received that she was Elizabeth. And that remembrance um, for me is I remember really strongly uh, some past life remembrances of me being Elizabeth, sitting in the garden with Mother Mary and being taught in the garden. And I also clearly remember uh, being in the tomb with Mary Magdalene healing Jeshua. Those are powerful remembrances for me. Mm. So depending on whatever name you want to call her to me yeah. I call her Elizabeth right. and yet um, she was um, very devoted to Jesus and her mission was to help assist him before during and after the crucifixion and then she made her transition because she completed her sacred mission but she was right. she was a silent um, worker um, a silent disciple let's put it that way that um, was very humble and was completely dedicated uh, to serving uh, Jeshua. So when I had discovered that um, that I was incarnated, you know, that Elizabeth was a prior lifetime, that made more sense to me as to why the Holy Family started coming back, coming to me in 1997, because at that time when I started channeling them, I didn't feel connected uh, to the Holy Family. And yet uh, that became very clear to me that, oh, that is why these transmissions are coming through me now because I am Elizabeth. And so I was devoted then and now, you know, I've 
since since my time, since I started channeling, I've devoted my life to, to spirit and particularly to the Holy Family. Yeah, I feel this is the rebirthing of consciousness is going back to the idea of having a Holy Family and healing our families, healing ourselves so that we can heal the family unit. And that's what I've been hearing over the last couple of weeks and months is this divine family unit, whatever that looks like, um, you know, non-gender specific or heteronormative, it doesn't have to be, but it's more about the idea of the, the family, what is a family and, and um, what is that in our community and how do our communities look and evolve, mm -hmm. right? And I, I think that's so interesting when you mentioned that, okay, her, she died quite young, um, because her earth contract and her divine contract was was over. So I found that very, very interesting, especially what we're going through right now or have gone through with the last uh, few years or one or two years of the pandemic that, um, I mean, we can be very careful here, but people are suddenly their contracts are over, right? Um, and they have assisted us in a great shift and, and healing. I wonder if you have any insight um, on, on death as a tra transition phase? Well, my understanding of why a lot of people are, um, I think we talked about this before, of um, so much death occurring is that we are in this ascension process. We're going through this major mm -hmm. ascension into this new age and this new earth. And that, yes, many people, their soul contracts are complete. So if they're leaving the planet at rapid rates through this mass ascension. Mm -hmm. So many people are, have thought, oh, the second coming of Christ, that people would be taken up the sky and there would be the rapture and Jesus would appear and people would go about their business. And yet perhaps this is a new way of looking at rapture, this ascension where people are choosing to leave the planet you know, through physical death, where others are choosing to stay in their ascension process of staying on the planet and awakening you know, in their bodies. Mm -hmm. And so we have those two factions, uh, and yet the energy of the Christ consciousness, the energy of um, the cosmic mother, the energy of oneness is, is uh, becoming stronger and stronger upon our planet. So again, the second coming of whatever you want to call it, the second coming Christ consciousness, or however you want to use it, the age of enlightenment is here. Yeah. And so people are staying, some are leaving, and that's... Um, there's no judgment upon it. It's just whatever the soul chooses that's, that's yeah. best for the soul. Mm, thank you. That's beautiful. Um, one tool that I use um, specifically in regards to ascension is anointing, right? So I anoint with holy oils. And I think that is such a sacred process that I, I wouldn't do it for, for everybody. But just like with the baptisms and the holy oils and let's say the spiritual practices and tools that Mary Magdalene and Yeshua had, um, they, we use these uh, oils and the sacred medicine just as much as we would use prayer to activate people and to help them clear blockages so that they may ascend, right? And recently it was the first time I um, anointed a, a child and uh, I was anointing her mother and then I was anointing the child, a, a young girl, uh, very beautiful and what I was seeing in my mind's eye I was going from the human adult to this uh, child and what I was seeing in my mind's eye were rainbows and unicorns the energy of the purity of the divine innocence was just godlike was and I always say children are the reflection of God or looking at the eyes of a child is like looking at God and it was such a beautiful experience and later I was told the, uh, the child was said, uh, I've never been this happy, which was just so, so beautiful. <laughs> so again, these are the, one of the many, many tools way showers assist um, in drawing back to ancient practices, um, moving forward to, to clear blockages and opening the path uh, towards ascension. Now, yes, please. I was going to say that whoever's in your presence, they're divinely blessed to receive all your love and the, the gifts that you bring to them. So thank you, Lee. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I'm happy to 
ride the wave. <laughs> we'll go back to uh, Sarah Tamar if you like. I know we have almost 12, 12 uh, coming up. And um, something I wanted to ask you is, I hardly, personally, I hardly know anything about Sarah as a grown woman. Like what happened to Sarah Tamar? Well, I don't know the full story of what all happened to her. I do know that she, um, um, left her energy or imprint in not only Glastonbury, but yeah. in France mm -hmm. and in Spain. And I don't know all the other places yeah. where she traveled, but that her imprint of balance is in the Middle East as well, you know, in Europe. Um, so what I want to do is, um, right when we get to 1212, I want to be able to bring Sarah in and just give a small message from Sarah. Um, and, um, if I have time, I'll read this transcript if I feel called to do it. But um, Sarah is just saying that her energy is timeless and that a part of um, her, uh, her identity um, has been altered and fragmented. Mm. And so she's left her energy and dispersed her energy. Mm in many lands and many places uh, for people to be reawakened again. So, um, yeah, I don't know much about um, the, uh, the physical adult Sarah versus her energetic uh, mission is more what I understand, you know, I've yeah. been told about her. Right. Um, um, but she did say, uh, which I hope it's okay to say that you are one of her descendants. You were part of that bloodline. So you're a descendant of Sarah. Mm -hmm. So as you know, I look at you, I see that purity and that innocence and uh, that wisdom, you know, as a, a beautiful maiden uh, that holds the beautiful balance, you know, the divine mother, divine father essence. So I don't know if you're aware of that or not, but that's what I got this morning. Thank you so much for saying that. Thank you. Because you do have a strong feel to Sarah. I mean, I feel that energetically from you, even if you're not aware of it or not like, hmm. which is interesting where you live, you know? Yeah. <laughs> when I found out where you live, I go, oh, yeah. okay. Oh, I, that's what it was, the Basque region. Because I was told I, that yeah. Sarah was in the Basque region here right. in Spain and that I was supposed to go there, that the people there uh, understood about Sarah, and so yeah. um, there were a lot of secrets uh, wow. the Basque people knew uh, about the lineage of Sarah. So you're in that region. That's I think we talked about that before, right? I'm in Catalonia, so I'm actually just an hour away of Montserrat, where there's also a statue of the Black Madonna. So what I know of the Basque region, and this is why the information when you first told me came as a happy surprise. Like I wasn't um, so like shocked about it I'm very open to it it would make sense because to me the Basque region um, has always been one of mystery where you know with that language that came from somewhere where they can't trace it to a European origin you know the the Basque language Uskeda um, for, for me it's a type of light language or it almost like as if it were a indigenous South American language anyway it's so so beautiful there. And if you, you tell me there's mystery there, I will go there on my holy grail quest and I will continue exploring because that's a privilege I have being here in a physical form, right? In the in the lands of the Cathars and the lands of Mary Magdalene, Yeshua and Sarah. Yeah, I was told that I was supposed to go there. So when you contacted me, I'm like, oh, I just knew there was something powerful <laughs> that perhaps maybe we can connect and because I yeah. was told I was supposed to go there. Yes, when you come, we will for sure connect. Whenever that happens, we'll, yes. we'll pray for that because it's like, oh, I think I have a connection to the Basque region here. I'm like, what? And yeah, it was just, it's just wild how spirit works. It's like amazing how the, you know, like I'm in the US, you're in Spain, how could this yeah. be? I mean, it just blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Uh, we, we we're also connected and that's why I think sometimes we get a little bit lost in also the time conversions because we're like, that doesn't matter. <laughs> we're all here now. You know. So we're getting close to our time. I think so. Yeah, we are. Yeah. 
So let me tap into Sarah. We're going to open this portal if you are so gracious. And you as a descendant of Sarah holding that beautiful balance. Um, and Julie is here as the gatekeeper uh, for this property here in Dehinda, Illinois, mm -hmm. in the USA, on her farm called the Smiling Frog Farm. The Smiling Frog Farm. Wow. <laughs> the retreat center, the Smiling Frog Farm. Greetings, dear beloveds. Yes, it is I, Sarah. I come on this most powerful day to activate this portal and to awaken this energy upon the earth. It has been divinely orchestrated that the essence of what we call divine balance, that which I represent as the missing holy grail, the divine chalice, now be brought forth and integrated and fully activated into the heart of Mother Earth. Here in the ley lines and in the grid lines of this land, here in what you call your heartland of America, I, Sarah, come to open this portal, to activate this energy here on this land. So the great conclave of beings who have chosen to come to this planet to be awakeners, to be activators, to assist this planet in merging into divine sacred union, will now begin to awaken to this frequency of divine balance within themselves. And as this beautiful portal now begins to open, more and more souls will be drawn to this region, to this land, to this vortex, to this frequency of balance. And I, Sarah, stand here on this land as a clarion call. So others may begin to feel, sense, and know the strength of the Divine Mother and the Divine Father essence as one frequency, as one light, as one divine holy grace. For it is of great importance that each of you seek the balance within yourself to allow the planet to return back to its sacred balance and union. And the work that my mother and my father brought forth and the energy in which I hold as the container, as the vessel, waiting for each of you to be awakened to the divine balance shall now come forth. So I ask you to take a deep inhaling breath and simply begin to breathe in this energy of the white light of God, breathing in the energy of the white light of God, breathing in the energy of the white light of God. It is I, Sarah. I come now to infuse my energy into this earth, awakening this property, awakening the heart of Mother Earth, awakening the ley lines and the grid lines, and into the very crystalline core of Mother Earth on this day, as you call your 8-8 of 2021, of what you call your Lion's Gate portal. This is a new portal of energy. That is being awakened upon the Earth. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? as both the Palladian brothers and sisters, the Syrian, the Arcturians, are, are opening their frequencies to assist for the return of the balance and the harmony for all life on. And this land will become rich and fertile. And as the gatekeeper, named Julie, holds the template, again for balance, for others to receive. It is her mission to be the gatekeeper and the overseer of this beautiful frequency that will assist this planet and all life forms to return to balance. I'm here as Sarah, 
I am the chalice. May you drink from 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 the chalice. Fill your heart with divine union and divine balance. Drink from the chalice. Go in peace. And we thank you, Sarah. And we thank all of our Palladian brothers and sisters and the Syrians and the Arcturians of all the beings of light who have stepped forward to help assist bring this balance upon the earth. As Mother Gaia receives this energy, this portal, this activation upon this land. Today on your 1212 on this Lion's Gate, 8-8-2021. May peace, love, harmony, and unity return back to this planet. And this we give our grace, and so, so it is. I'll just read a short part of this uh, transmission that I did from July 26, 21, the message on return to balance from Sarah Jeshua Mary Magdalene. Since the beginning of the assumption of humanity returning back into oneness, since the great divide, as they say, when the souls were separated from the energy of oneness to begin the cycle of incarnation on this planet, the divide had begun. Now at this time in human consciousness, the division as appears to become wider and wider, and yet this is not a truth. As we have spoken of many times, the new earth energies that are coming on the planet are creating great harmony, balance, love, and peace. You're not yet feeling it or sensing it in its full realm, but it is happening. And now my daughter Sarah and her energy, her vibration, her frequency of holding the energy of the Holy Grail of the divine union can be brought forth to return the balance, to bring the energy of balance and the original state of grace of the divine spark onto the planet again. And so my Sarah, who has been silent, who has been hidden in many ways, has held her power and her frequency of what we call seclusion, or what some may call suppression for too long. Now it is time for dear Sarah to reemerge, to be reawakened, to step forth and to bring her truth, her light, and her energy onto the planet. Just as my Mary and I had held the template for the sacred union and the balance from Mother Gaia for all of life, Sarah was created her frequency her essence was that of balance, for she is that divine balance. She is that sacred union. She is the energy of the cosmic mother, father essence. And so at this time, as the new earth energies are emerging upon the planet, dear Sarah is now free to bring forth her essence, her frequency, her love, and her light. Her messages have been coming forward. Her energy has been stepping forward. Just in the time when the appearance of my mother, Mother Mary, the apparitions were appearing upon the earth and the renewed interest in my beloved Mary Magdalene. And now there's a renewed interest in dear Sarah. So we see the energy of the mother, the maiden, and the crone, the three energies of the sacred mother, sacred divine balance. So at this time, as dear Sarah brings her frequency and her vibration to help each to return to balance, it is of the utmost importance to allow yourself to go into quiet meditation, quiet contemplation, and to emerge in solitude, to merge in what we call the void, to enter into the state of grace, where the inner sanctuary that lives inside your being can now begin to fill your vessel. Just as Mary and I would go into the cave and we would go into the cave of creation, we would allow ourselves to begin to feel the stirrings of our own divine spark of our own divinity and begin to listen to the still quiet voice from within. Today is of great importance as you have so much stimulation, so much chatter, so much confusion that is causing division and separation of your human consciousness the polarization of energies from many factions, many raising their voices, their opinions, their beliefs, and their understanding onto the world. It is confusing, and yet it is time to be quiet. It is time to listen. It is try time to discern your own truth. As you begin to feel the divine spark within you, begin to listen to your own still quiet voice from within, and your voice will become louder. Your own voice will become the driving force, as they say, as your higher self and your divine spark lead and guide you so there's no confusion, there's no separation. 
There is no fear. There is only love. Wow. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> amen. 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 <laughs> amen. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was going to ask you, did you feel anything with the opening or Julie, did you feel any energy coming in? Oh, Julie did. Let's, let, let's, Julie, you want to share? Yeah, Julie, do you want to come yeah, in? Come on, come on. I have change seats. We need to, we need to all land. Land. <laughs> land. Get the links for your property. Hi, Julie. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. Really good. <laughs> it just felt very special. Yeah. And the the light that came in and I got full body chills just running the entire time um, and it just feels like uplifted you know like it's higher yeah wow wow what I saw was I was actually bare on the land um holding hands and bringing it in there was also Sara Tamar as the figure of the black madonna right so we were all there holding hands chanting bringing it in lovely <laughs> oh now tell folks again where exactly you're located and what your retreat center is called so we have that it's called the retreat and meditation center at smiling frog farm we're in a little town called Dehinda, Illinois, um, USA. In, the, in the United States. Um, we're sort of West Central Illinois. Okay. Gotcha. Three hours from Chicago. Three hours from Chicago. <laughs> Three hours from Chicago. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Wow. I'm sending so much love. I'm beaming so much love. Thank you for your presence here today, Julie, as a sacred gatekeeper. And for the retreat center, our custodian of the land as well, you know. And Lee, thank you so much for your time. Do you want to both come in this week? No, I just want to say thank you for having me. You are beautiful. I hope I get to see you in Spain. We can go to Basque Country. You will. I know that we, you are um, a powerful descendant of Sarah. I would like to uh, gift you with a reading about who you are as Sarah, if you would like to know more, more about that. I would love that. Thank you. Beautiful, so beautiful lady. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a lovely afternoon or evening or wherever you, what time you, whatever time it is. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> thank you so much for, for coming on. I mean, both of you and then Lee for, for the time and for your channeling and for um, Sada Tamar and for your book and gifting us with these um, practical tools as well. I think there's so much juiciness uh, in this conversation that we can also extract and help folks and just spread the message of love and light. <laughs> well, you're fabulous. You're just cute as a button. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My divine pleasure. So I'm going to end the recording. Thank you. Let's wave or say goodbye. And then, right. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye.